Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to the craft slash dining room. Today I've got a fun die cutting based card that involves just a little bit of ink blending to create a really fun custom background for the die cuts that I'm using today. This is not difficult. This is so easy. And the cool thing is, is whatever your favorite colors are, those colors become the background to your die cuts. So stick around this simple die cutting card coming up next. So here's a look at the card project I'll be creating today. And this is mostly die cutting and a little bit of ink blending. It's a very simple design, but I think this idea of creating your own backgrounds for die shadow layers is so easy to do. So let's take a look at the products I'm using today. Here are the two dies. One is called Detailed Rose and the other is Hugs. Now this Detailed Rose is huge. I mean, I have a human sized hand and it fits in my hand. It also comes with some leaves, both shadow layer and the delicate outline. And then there's the Hugs die. This is just a word and shadow layer and you can break them apart just like that by twisting them. And if you don't like those little, uh, pointy things that will, well, they'll poke you. I, I have bled on projects before. You can just snip them off with a tool. I use this tool. I snip and twist and get those little pointies off. So easy to use dies that are not separated, just like that. All right, so I've got my word and shadow layer. Those are the basics. And of course, I'm going to be using a few other things as we go. So let's get into it. The first thing I wanted to do is create some pretty backgrounds for the shadow layers. And I thought at first I was going to draw a line to separate so I had a visual. Then I just grabbed some post-it tape. The post-it tape is just going to mask off the area where I'm going to blend the leaves background just to keep the pink off. And I'm just using three distress inks here. I've got one blender brush. I'm going to use the same blender brush for all three colors, starting with my lighter color, which is Tattered Rose just kind of blending around the outside. Then I'm going to create a darker circle of color. This is worn lipstick. I'm going to create that in the center and kind of blend it. I'll bring a little more tattered rose back in. Just go around the edges here. It doesn't have to be perfect because I am going to be popping my die cut over it. I'm going to put the darkest color picked raspberry right in the center just to create a little dimension. Nothing fancy. You do not have to be the world's best ink blender to do this. And the cool thing is by changing out your colors, you change out the look of what you are creating. So here I did draw just a little line so that I knew keep your blending in this space. Starting out with bundled sage as the lighter color, I'm just going to put two little areas down. And then I thought I would bust out my brand new Rustic Wilderness. Hadn't used this yet, and I only have the large size pad. I don't know if there, I don't even know if there is a small pad, but got the Rustic Wilderness, which is perfect with bundled sage, just to bring in a little darker area of green so that my shadow layer for my leaf has dimension. One thing I failed to mention, I am using Strathmore Bristol Smooth, and can you see my fingerprints there? I, I, I think because this is such smooth paper, the ink tends to sit on top of the paper rather than soak in. So I just went over it and blended away my fingerprints. And then I just hit this lightly with my heat tool just to dry the ink. Again, that Bristol is a very smooth paper. Next, I'm going to cut out a bunch of my dies, the little outlines. So I'm going to cut a bunch of leaves and three rose layers. I run that through my Gemini. Please do not look at the sandwich that I have set up because it is completely incorrect. The funny thing is though, even set up incorrectly, it still cut beautifully. So ah, almost, uh, almost screwed the pooch on that one, but the cut turned out just fine. Now, once I have everything cut out, I'm going to add adhesive using a little spray adhesive to the back of the dies and start gluing and stacking them together. So I'll spray them on off camera and then just gently line up the dies, starting at one end and working my way across. Very delicate, but they do line up fairly easily. 
and then I'll add one more layer on that and I'll do that for all the leaves as well. Now that the ink has dried on my blended piece, I'll go ahead and cut out the shadow layers. I'll run that through my die cut machine, then add my spray adhesive to the back of the stacked die cuts and glue them right on to the shadow layer. Isn't that cute? I love it. And next I'll go ahead and glue the leaves onto the bases as well. So because this flower was so large, I created a five by seven card base. So seven inches by five inches. And I thought that was good because you can see how big this flower is, right? But the next step was to figure out what color cardstock would be best for the word hugs, because that's kind of the design that I wanted to create. So I have these little swatch rings. That's for my Gina K cardstock. That one's for my Simon Says Stamp. I love having these because it's really helpful for something like this when you're trying to figure out how you want to proceed with choosing cardstock color. I thought that was good, but when I put the darker cardstock on, and this is Dusty Rose, I just thought that was a little stronger. I mean, either would work. One just is a little bolder, and one is a little softer. So I went ahead and die cut all of those, glued them together, and now I'm going to start gluing on the rest of the die cuts. I started with the leaves, and I wanted them to be directly glued with the liquid adhesive right to the card base. So just dotting it on the back of the shadow layer and popping those into place. Now I knew I needed that rose to have a little more elevation over the leaves. So what I did was I took some foam squares and actually doubled them up because that seemed to give me the proper clearance. And once I had those doubled up, I also took a little of the liquid adhesive, you know, just kind of popped it down. What this does is it gives me a little wiggle room with that liquid adhesive to just position the die right in place and that was the perfect amount of loft over the leaves. So for the stacked word hugs, I also doubled up on the foam and then just put a little liquid adhesive to hold that securely to the rose. Brought in my ruler to make sure it was straight and press that down. Simple, right? But that, that packs a punch. So I thought it needed just a little bit more. So I picked five silver sequins, just kind of place them directly in relation to the flower and the title. That's the key sometimes with sequins. You really want them to have a physical relationship to whatever is going on in your card. And I'll actually put a card up top if you want to watch a video I did about sequin placement. Some people find it helpful. But that, that is the finished card project. Love that blended background, loved the stacked die cuts and the dimension, and there's no stamping involved. Turned out pretty cute, right? So again, you are only limited by whatever colors you want to slap in the background. Well, I suppose you're limited by the rainbow, but the rainbow, the rainbow is unending. It is, right? Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.